Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To. And on today's video, we're taking a look at a slightly unusual cooler, which makes some very broad and grand claims. But does it live up to them? Well, you're going to have to watch the video to find out. This was sent in to us for review by Ugly Bob. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. This cooler you can pick up on places like Amazon and also from AliExpress for actually very similar prices. You're looking at around about £25 or $25, depending on when and where you're shopping from. This is a compact cooler with some splashes of addressable RGB. So if you're into RGB, then this is going to be right up your street. There's four versions available, actually. There is a plain white version. There is a plain black version. And there's also the RGB black version and the RGB white version. So one of those hopefully should fit the bill. Obviously, there will be slightly different prices depending on which version you go for. But they are all going to be around about that sort of price. Something we should address straight away is some of the claims which are made on the packaging of this, which I'll try to use some close-ups of, and also you can see it in all the advertisements, and also actually weirdly on their website as well, which I strongly suggest you check out. This majority of it is in Chinese, but there is English as well, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. This has a wild claim of being able to tame processors or support a TDP of up to 220 watts which for a very small cooler, which is basically a 10 centimeter one, 92 mil fan on there, so it's a 10 centimeter tower cooler, I think that's an extremely bold claim. There's a lot of just AIOs that won't do that. So yeah, they've either got some very special source going on on this, or I honestly don't know how they've worked it out. Now we all know that when it comes to TDPs for processors, TDP doesn't really mean a great deal, and it is kind of like one of those terms just banded around. You've got a lot of processors, such as the one I'm running in the system behind me, which is a TDP, I think, 65 watts. But if you unlock it, it will quite easily hit about 120, 130 watts. So the TDP ratings are a very misleading thing to do. But what is actually relevant is how well it does. So we have tested this, which we'll take a look at the results a little bit later on. We we'll go through, do an unboxing, see what it's all about, see if it's any good for what you want it to do. Look at the mounting hardware. There will be a, actually a specific separate mounting video for both the Intel and also for the AMD mountings, both AM4 and AM5. So if you wanna check out either of those, those will hopefully be linked in the video description below also. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So we'll take a look at the packaging. It's actually quite nice retail packaging. The brand name of this is called Zhui Shark. Um, I've never heard of them before, actually. It's a relatively new brand on me. Uh, maybe you've heard of it before. If you have, let us know in the comment section. They do actually some weird and wonderful coolers. I'm reasonably sure that some of them seem to be kind of based around John's bow designs. That could be the case. I'm not entirely sure, so don't take that as gospel, but there are a lot of similarities there. In terms of the packaging, it looks very nice. It's got all the specifications on there. It shows you both versions. So that is the kind of the, uh, the crystal white version. And also on that side, you've got the black version or majority of it is black. Uh, the interesting part is actually the specifications. So I'll give you a close up of the specifications so you can have a look at those for yourself. So this is the JF100 RS Crystal. We've got the product size 100 mil by 75 mil by 131 mil. That is the height. Uh, heat sink is basically 10 centimeters or 100 mil. You've also got four heat pipes in here as well. So there are four heat pipes built into this, all of which are six mil heat pipes and the fan size is 100 by 100. Speed of the fan between 800 and also 2300 RPM. And actually it's got quite a punch to it. I have actually compared this in terms of the fan. So I actually took the fan off to see if there's any special source in the fan itself. And I've tested it against the Noctua NF9. Um, you'll see the results of that later. Actually quite surprising. There are going to be some obvious differences, but anyway, we'll take a look at those a little bit later on. But yeah, overall, 220 watt TDP as it's listed there, and it's got the fan ratings, air pressure, etc., etc. And also, it's got the rated noise. Now, the rated noise, again, I don't know how they do this. I'm guessing they put it into some sort of soundproof booth and measure it in there, which means nothing to most people would use it in a normal household environment. Now, for us here in Mike's Unboxing, the noise floor in here generally tends to be somewhere between 30 and 40 decibels, which is the kind of thing you'd expect to see at a library when we're filming here. Obviously, when there's other stuff going on, it gets considered to be louder. But in general, it's that sort of noise floor. So I'm thinking that if you add on the noise floor of your existing place and add on the DBA readings on there, that is going to give you a better idea of what it actually sounds like. So realistically, this is going to start at somewhere around about 50 dBA and head up to somewhere in the 70s. So it can get a little bit louder at those higher RPMs. There is actually a little bit of footage I've got later on, which will show you how loud that is. And in fact, actually, I'll probably insert it now just so you can hear what the noise level is like when it's at full blast. 
and then obviously when it calms down as well. This is the fans at 100% Cinebench load. Temperature reducing. Noise level also reducing. So we've got a little bit ahead of ourselves there, so let's go through the unboxing and see what it's all about. So you can see obviously we've got the, uh, the cooler here, very small, tiny little cooler. It's actually very cute. So if you're looking at building in a slightly smaller chassis, micro ATX or ITX builds, and you just want something which is nice and compact, this is going to be great because you've got really nice RAM clearance. Because of where the screw mountings are, they're nowhere near the fans or the fins. So yeah, you've got no issues whatsoever with any socket in terms of RAM. So if you've got four RAM slots populated, it's going to be no problems whatsoever. You also get your instruction manual, which is actually pretty decent. Everything in there is nice and clear and concise. No real tricks or anything weird going on there. So yeah, it all makes absolute sense. Would have been nice to have been in colour, but it is what it is. You also get a bag of mounting hardware. So let's take a look inside and see what we get in there. So they've really simplified the mounting hardware. So if you are on the Intel side of the fence and you're mounting this onto an Intel processor, of which it supports pretty much most of the modern CPU sockets of the last 10 to 15 years. So you just use one of these back plates and you've got the adjustment on the side there so you can adjust that to whichever socket platform you're on. It works with LJ1700, it works with 1200, 11.5X, etc. So yeah, you shouldn't have any problems there whatsoever. Pretty standard deal these days. You also get an included sachet of thermal compound. I haven't used this uh, for the sake of testing because there isn't a lot in here, but it's going to be enough to get you going. For our specific testing here, I've gone with the Thermalrite TF4 compound. Uh, thanks very much to Rick H for sending that over to us. I found it's been really good and very easy to apply and remove. I'm not quite sure if it's as good as MX6, but it's uh, within the right ballpark, so no problems there. Uh, getting back to the mounting hardware, so you've got two brackets. So that is going to be for your m4 m5 or for your intel platform so not much there that's great and when it comes to actually the fix-ins they've done a really nice job there so you've got an m4 m5 bracket bag and also you've got an intel one as well so nice and simple so just color coded there the intel ones are like a gray block with the screws there which are silver and for the m4 m5 black blocks with black screws so very difficult to go wrong on here i think they've done a really good job on that Let's take a closer look at the actual cooler itself. So like I said, absolutely tiny little cooler. So you've got the nice frame around there, rubber dampeners on all the corners as well, which is always a nice thing to see, especially on something which is a little bit more budget orientated. You've got the logo in the middle, which unfortunately the sticker does appear to have been stuck on slightly off center, a little bit annoying for some people. So when you spin it, you can see it kind of wobbles a little bit, but it's not the end of the rule, but I wanted to point it out. Uh, translucent blade, so that's going to let the addressable RGB shine through. You've probably seen this on B-roll already, so yeah, no real surprises there. Nice and easy to remove, so you've got clips on the side, as you'd expect to see. The clips are pretty standard, so if you want to put on another fan, such as a Noctua or any other 92mm fan, it's going to be fine. They measure this as being 10 centimeters or 100mm, but basically it's a 92mm fan. But yeah, that's no problems at all. We've got 45 fins on the fin stack. We've also got four heat pipes, as we said earlier, so four 6mm heat pipes, and these are terminated at the bottom, and they are exposed as well, so they're not encapsulated, which some people prefer. Um, I'm not particularly bothered either way, as long as it does what it needs to do. The finish on it is very nice, and I'm not getting my nail stuck in it, so yeah, it's done pretty smooth. If you look very, very closely, you can see there's very slight pits in it, but that is basically part and parcel of heat pipes unless they've been professionally polished. When it comes to mounting, two screws for mounting, one at the front and one also at the back. You probably notice as well, the heat pipes have been swept back as well in order to gain that excellent RAM clearance. So yep, yeah, that's uh, pretty decent. There is a sticker on the bottom obviously to peel off before you install it. On the top is somewhat of the kind of thing which characterizes what this is about. So you've got your addressable RGB on the front on the fan and also this section here, there's some backlighting behind the Jewish Shark logo on this metal section here. And yeah, it seems to be really well constructed. There's no kind of loose bits. The plastic is all done really nicely, wherever there is any plastic, so it doesn't feel as if it's gonna fall apart. You have got a little bit of cabling here to deal with, so let's pull that out. So for the fan connectivity, 
No surprises there, four pin PWM as you'd expect on a modern CPU cooler. When it comes to the addressable RGB, same deal. So five volt, three pin addressable RGB. There's also a pass-through connector as well, which has got a cap on there to protect the pins. Something which I'm not entirely keen on, the RGB to route it to the top, there's a cable which runs down through. And then when the fan is connected, it's kind of, you've got to have it poking out the side here which is absolutely fine, but it does almost get in the way of the clip there, if you look very closely. So potentially, if you're not careful there and don't keep an eye on it, you might accidentally clamp over the cables, which could potentially break them or damage them. You can disconnect it, so there is a little push connector there, and that will allow you to take the fan off in its entirety and disconnect the top RGB. So yeah, not too bad at all. Looks nice, does the job, the RGB is really nice. Um, the fan itself is actually not too bad. When it's in idling conditions or at lower RPMs, it's absolutely fine, virtually silent. When it gets up to the very top end, there is a little bit of noise to it, as you'd expect with a fan, which is actually quite small, running at 2300 RPM. It's gonna generate a little bit of noise, but it isn't that bad. I thought it was gonna be worse, but the pitch is actually quite nice. So I think they've done a really good job on the fan, as we can see from the results, which we'll take a look at next. So we've got three results here, one of which is the stock configuration. So this is basically my PC behind me in its configuration as it stands now. So that is with the Noctua NHU12S with the Inwin MR24 uh, cooler, or whatever cooler it is on there. That is my kind of baseline results. So looking at the baseline results, you've got a lowest temperature recorded of 38.4 degrees Celsius. Highest recorded temperature was 87.4 degrees Celsius and a, our Cinebench runs, which was a five minute loop, we've got a score of 18,901 points. Now this actually used up 129.72 watts of power. So yeah, pretty decent draw there, 130. We're getting towards the upper limits of what I would like to see in terms of temperature wise. But again, this is only 130 watts. So again, the whole TDP thing, this being able to cope with 220 watts, I think is a little bit misleading, if I'm honest. So let's take a look and see what it actually performs like in comparison. So with the JF100RS, we're looking at lowest recorded temperature, about four degrees difference. So we're looking at 42.5 degrees Celsius. The highest recorded temperature, again, we've crept up a little bit more. There's a little bit of a widening gap there. So 94.9 degrees Celsius. So pretty much getting towards that top end of where we're gonna see the processor starting to thermal throttle. Although in this instance, it didn't appear to. And with that, we've got a score of 18,240 points. And we're drawing somewhere in the region, well, the maximum recorded is 125.85 watts. So a little bit less and a slightly lower score, as you expect, around about 700 points difference. So yeah, totally um, understandable. This is a very small cooler. Now, switching it up a bit, let's now swap out the fan and see if the fan is what is doing the job here or whether or not it's the actual CPU cooling stack. So let's stick on the Noctua NF9 and take a look at the results. So we've got a lowest recorded temperature, two degrees hotter actually, 44.8 degrees Celsius. The highest recorded temperature, now these are packaged temperatures, uh, 95.6. So that is a little bit worse, again, about two degrees off. And we've got a lower score as well. So 18,121 points and slightly less wattage as well. So 123.72 watts. So definitely the fan seems to be doing a fantastic job and in fact beats the Noctua version. I think that is mostly down to the higher RPM and the higher static pressure. The other fan from Noctua is more of an airflow fan, even though it is able to fit onto some coolers, but it is significantly quieter. So that is one of the takeaways from that. But overall, actually, I'm in two minds with this one. I'm impressed with it in terms of what it can do in such a small form factor. My concern is that people are going to see this and see it's got a TDP of 220 watts and take that at its face value. Now, if you look at the website, I'll try and include some screenshots here to see what you can see. Their testing was with a Intel i9-11900K and they're showing different watches there, 183 and I think it was 230 something. But if you look very closely, you'll notice that it seems that the processor is actually locked in terms of its frequency at four gigahertz. Whereas I'm pretty sure the 11900 will go up to something like 5.4 and maybe on an all core load, maybe a little bit lower than that, but certainly I think higher than four gigahertz. Maybe I'm wrong, I've not tested one of those processors, but it just seems like the frequency is seemingly lower than it should be. But let me know what you think about that in the comments section. So yeah, I think it's slightly misleading with the TDP of 220 watts. If they said it did like 150 watts, 
I could probably get behind that and agree with it, but yeah, I think that is uh, shooting for the moon a little bit too far. But ultimately, for a CPU cooler, which is very compact, will fit in pretty much any case, even some of those smaller ITX ones, and only cost around about £25. I think it's actually a pretty decent value for money if it fits what you need. If you've got room for a larger CPU cooler, then certainly there's a lot more competition on the market and even things around about £20 from Thermal Right, John's Bow, Cooler Master, the list goes on. There's a lot of competition out there on the market if you've got the room for a slightly larger tower cooler. But if you don't, I think this is actually worth a look. Just don't be misled by that TDP rating. So overall, yep, yeah, very happy. Thanks again to Ugly Bob for sending this in for review purposes. Sorry, it's taken so long to get around to it. It's been a busy time of year over the uh, Christmas period, New Year, etc. But yeah, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. And then you can hit the chime notification and that way we know notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.